Hi guys, Virtus Education here with the 12th video of the Unreal Development Kit beginner series. And in this video, I'm going to be going over stra uh, fractured static meshes as uh, promised, usually referred to as destruction. So, let's begin. What is a fractured static mesh? A fractured static mesh is essentially a static mesh, which uh, can be uh, fractured uh, into little fragments. Uh, I'm going to show you an example, uh, an example being this. As you can see with the static Static mesh. It's not just an ordinary static mesh because normal ones they aren't dynamic. You can't do anything you, to them. You just shoot them and uh, they just stay there. These are both fractured static meshes. So you know, just go ahead and experiment with a normal one. But you can see very clearly on this one that it is fractured. It can be broken into many different little pieces here. Uh, there is a few errors which uh, are actually, there is a few errors with this piece, but. You know, those errors are easy to fix, and I'll go over some of those. But nonetheless, we've got some nice, sweet uh, destruction inside of UDK. You can see some pretty good examples of destruction in games such as Battlefield. You don't usually get them in generic, uh, cl uh, generic cl uh, shooters such as uh, Call of Duty. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's go into how we actually make some of these. So please note this. I, d I believe this isn't uh, NVIDIA's Apex Destruction. Um... I think this is uh, UDK's uh, destruction which they've built themselves ages ago. So, let's begin. Let's go over to the content browser. And before anything, you know, the name static mesh uh, kind of denotes that we can be a static mesh beforehand. So, I'm just going to be go ahead and uh, find a nice lovely static mesh. Something that's nice and solid and uh, hopefully this one here which I have chosen should suffice and I actually used in my example. So. One last check I need to make with my static mesh is uh, firstly that it's completely solid, there's faces on all sides, and secondly I need to make sure it has collision. To do that just go into the static mesh editor and uh, press the show collision and uh, you should be able to see it. And as you can see we've got nice lovely solid collision here that uh, goes over all over the mesh and we don't want any blank spaces and so on so hopefully this should be fine for now. So how do we make this fractured? So you know, you can look through these different settings that we have here, but uh, that doesn't necessarily do anything. So what we need to do is we need to go over to the Fractor tool. So you can do this by pressing this little button here. It looks like a little cube with a bit of fragments and slices and stuff in there. And it's just to the left of the LOD text. So we get this little uh, dialog open and you can see we've got a whole bunch of different properties for this. So, you know, let's just go ahead and... Uh, go through some of the main ones. So the main ones being the number of chunks which uh, allows you to define exactly how many chunks you're going to have in your object and obviously as we like realistic looking uh, destruction we're going to put this all the way up and you can see we've got a lot of uh, chunks or we can turn it down relatively low and we've only got a few chunks but uh, big chunks at that but for the sake of tutorial, I'm just going to make sure I've got loads of big chunks so you can see the destruction working at its finest. You don't necessarily need to work with any of these. So, you can also uh, add some properties for individual chunks. So, for example, I can select one of these chunks and I can, um, and I can choose one of these options for that chunk. So... For example, I can make it a destroyable, I can make it a support chunk, or I can make it spawn no phys physics. So a destructible one is one that you can shoot, and if you do a certain amount of damage to it, it will actually disappear. Support chunks will be something that actually support the wall itself. So that support's going to be like the very bottom ones, or the ones around the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you uh, an exa a quick example of how we would set up some support chunks. So first of all, let's just go ahead and click a few chunks. So t to click multiple chunks, just go ahead and uh, control click and click and keep kick uh, clicking these. So just make sure you capture all the ones at the bottom here. You know, as the bottom ones are going to be uh, keeping this nice and. Uh, steady and uh, support it so hopefully I should have all the bottom ones nope just could turn it round and I'll get these last few hmm for some reason I can't get that one there we go so now we've got all the bottom chunks so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, check support chunks and if I go ahead and click on another one you'll see it's be unchecked and it's only going to be applied to the uh, chunks that I actually selected also there is one other thing that I want to note, is that when you turn it into a frat uh, fractured static meshes, 
uh, fractal static mesh, it's going to generate loads and loads of different chunks, and subsequently, it's also going to be uh, changing uh, the try count because it's got to generate all these extra polygons or tries and so on and so forth. You'll see at the moment it's just 76. This is pre cut, whereas the actual final cut sliced piece will be something significantly higher. So, uh, I'm not going to be working with any of these properties, just make sure you have your support chunks selected, uh, you define how many chunks you need, and go ahead and press slice, and uh, it will start making this. So, okay, so I can't make that because I've already got a piece named with that, so I'm just going to make this uh, named Fractured 2. Don't worry about that, it'll pop up there, that should be fine. And uh, let's see if we can find our piece. I'm just going to delete this one that I have here. And I'm going to place in my newly made fractured static mesh. And you're actually going to see it won't appear. Uh, that's because I haven't actually saved the package. So to do that, just go ahead and right click the fractured static mesh you just made. And uh, press save. Or alternatively, you can just save the entire package. But you know, ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, you know, if we go ahead and press play, we should be able to shoot this object now, and it will fall into different pieces. However, that's not very pretty, as you can see, we've got that default material on the inside, there's no uh, effects and stuff like that, so let's add some explosions and materials on the inside. So just go ahead and double click on your fractal static mesh as I did, I did it off screen, so I'm just going to bring up the content browser on here, Double click it and you'll see we've got the static mesh editor which is adapted to specifically um, uh, this uh, fractured static mesh. So let's see what we can actually do with this bad boy. Uh, before I do that actually I want to point out that you can see here the try count has gone from 96 or something like that up to 5000 which is just crazy. But you know obviously it's uh, going to work. Also, I want to point out uh, we want to make sure we have use simple box collision and simple line collision uh, toggled off. This essentially um, gets rid of any collision once the piece falls over or some chunks come out. This will be your simple box collision. So obviously if we shoot some in the middle, that collision is going to be there. And you're going to have things like invisible walls and stuff if you actually break those pieces. Just make sure those two options are unchecked. And uh, I'm actually going to show you what that does now. By pressing play, I'm going to shoot a massive hole in here. And, uh, and I'm going to try and walk through it if possible. So, it's a, okay, let's do this. Okay, not enough space. I'm just going to use my secondary fire and blow a huge hole. Okay, this should be good. And uh, as you can see, I can jump through it. However, I can't walk through the bits where there are still pieces. Uh, but there we go. Doesn't work at all and uh, works out pretty well. So the next issue that we need to address is the uh, that is the material that is being displayed for the chunks. We can actually change that from the default uh, material. So let's go ahead and see if we can find that. Uh, don't worry, you shouldn't be too bad. Dynamic outside material might be what we're looking for, so uh, let's go ahead and find your material. So I'm going to type in wall. I'm going to make sure I uncheck static meshes because I don't want any of these. And uh, I'm just going to dump uh, any old material in here and it should uh, work, providing I've got the right uh, field. And, uh, oops, okay, so that's definitely not the right box, so uh, I chose the wrong there, one there, sorry about that. Uh, let's see what I can find. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to go back to the material later on. So I've got this thing here called Fragment Destroy Effects. This actually allows you to assign a particle system to be um, toggled on when you actually destroy um, a chunk. So I'm going to go ahead and check particle systems. And I'm going to type in explosion. And you're going to see this is going to do some crazy uh, stuff. Just put that in there, boom, press play, and you're going to see every time there's a chunk that breaks off, the particle system is going to be played, uh, as you can see here, which looks pretty cool. However, you know, obviously you're not going to have crazy explosions like this just from destroying cement, but, uh, you know, you should get the general idea of how it can actually be used. So let's go back to my uh, 
my fractured static mesh. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to go back to the material selection. Okay, sorry, here we go. So, over here in our LOD info zero elements, you can see we've got zero and one. One being your material for uh, the different pieces that you have, the different chunks, and zero being the main one which you can see on the inside. So if I go ahead and um, copy this material here and paste it onto the material for the actual chunks, you'll see the chunks use the same inside material it will look consistent and realistic as you can see here they all look nice and uh, sweet and dandy now they're actually rocks rather than just some bland boring and uh, quite frankly inconsistent blue default material so hopefully uh, everything look, should look all sweet and dandy before I end it off just make sure that you save all of your different uh, fractal static meshes you create just right click it and press save and everything should work and uh, feel good so one last thing I want to show you actually is um, the tutorial level which actually comes with UDK which actually utilizes this destruction in one of their test maps so I'm just gonna quickly see if I can find this maps showcase um, nope examples example map and you will see they've got a, a nice lovely kismet script which actually interacts with their destructible wall so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, press play up here hopefully I should support uh, I should spawn here however I may not so if I shoot this wall it breaks pretty nicely or alternatively I can press E up against that wall it'll place a, uh, the bomb and Boom! It's going to blow a hole in that and you can walk through it and obviously you can see that it got used simple box and line collision turned off so you can actually walk straight through it as it's still actually a fractured static mesh on the outside. Anyway, that should be everything for fractured static meshes. Keep in mind, there is loads and loads of other properties that you can actually play with and experiment with to uh, make your meshes uh, look and feel better. However, for now, this is the basics and uh, hopefully you should have everything you need to make fractured static meshes. So thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Stop recording, please.